Hello Video Gamers! I'm Shutanaka, this is my brother Chan, we are video game designers and that's all the introduction we can spare today. Chan and I are on a full Category 11 Code Tompkins Omega 24 hour dark orange pigment approaching burnt sea on its watch alert. For time, brother. Great Scott, you're right. Pray it has not... No. Nothing yet. Nothing reported yet. Why are we on alert? How can we not be? It was only a short while ago that Grand Theft Auto V hit the streets. The very streets innocent children used to play upon before they realized video games were substantially more fun. Grand Theft Auto V. Even now, in the darkened crack dens that used to be their bedrooms, countless elementary school children are lounging on the bodies of the murdered hobos that they use as beanbag chairs, staring wide-eyed into the glowing screen that is beaming directly into their formative brains, the acts of virtual carnage that will wipe away the final remaining traces of their humanity and bring about the very fall of mankind. How shall it begin? A chainsaw rampage in a McDonald's playland? A barbecue using the dried out husks of the elderly as fuel? Pink belly and double wedgies in the school library? A purpling of nurple? The only outcome is apocalypse. Don't get us wrong, we're not making the knee-jerk assumption that violent video games cause real-world violence. We've done our research, we've watched the news reports, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and according to these experts, it turns out that all real-world violence is caused by only three video game series, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, and Doom. If one did not know the rigorous fact-checking that is demanded of sensationalist network fluff pieces, one might suspect that these games were singled out only because they're extremely common. But that's just demonstrating the sort of cynicism that has pushed our society to the very edge of destruction. No, these specific games, for whatever reason, exude a very scientific force that we call murder rays, which instantly and irrevocably reprogram a subject into an unthinking, unfeeling engine of murderous hate. They're like a combination of crystal meth and Wilfred Brimley. But what is this element that ties them all together? What shared facet is the cause for all this real-world carnage? Sadly, we do not know. All that science can reasonably determine is that if anyone's still playing the original Doom, he's almost certainly a serial killer. And this is a problem, because quite apart from the violence, each of these game series sells extremely well. The question is put to us as responsible video game designers. How can we manufacture low-cost knockoffs of these franchises that sell really well, but don't turn our consumer base into grandparent murdering psychopaths? Brother. What if the common thread driving all this violence is the very fact that they're all billion sellers? Well, that would just be ridiculous, Brother Chan. How so? Because it would cost us money. A fair point. Continue. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, but do not make direct eye contact with, our assistant Arnie T. Ground Squirrel Restrained for Our Protection, who has graciously volunteered to keep his job and help us determine just which are the offending elements in these societally detrimental blockbusters. Why use Arnie? Two reasons. First, while no less awkward a conversation, it's easier to explain a bound and gagged rodent to the authorities than a human child. And second, it turns out that Arnie is extremely impressionable. After watching Goldeneye, Arnie was hospitalized with second-degree burns when he attempted to construct a functioning Laser watch. He used a grill lighter, a magnifying glass, and, like, two boxes of aluminum foil. We caught him in a dress after he saw 16 candles. Taffeta, it was. And after he watched Taxi Driver, <sighs> he drove a taxi. Admittedly, that one could have turned out worse. Our methodology is simple. We will explore a few of the more popular features of the Grand Theft Auto series and gauge Arnie's reaction to each, waiting for the moment when he inevitably flies into a murderous rage. I will be standing by on Kettle Prod. Safety first! Is everyone ready? <laughs> Sorry, I thought he was pouncing. Let's do this! We'll start with the staple of the series, a race. Since the very beginning, Grand Theft Auto has enabled players to partake of the noble sport of automobile racing, and by extension the noble sport of cursing at the television and snapping controllers in half. Yet in most instances, players in GTA are actually disqualified from the race if they instigate violence against another racer, reflecting an attitude that's surprisingly more pacifist than, for instance, Mario Kart. Of course, once the race is over, GTA tends to be pretty lenient in regards to post-event retaliation, over which the parents' groups can get a little particular. What's your take on this, Arnie? <coughs> Sorry, still a little jumpy. Let's move on. <coughs> What else is GTA known for? That's right, the in-game radio stations. The diverse musical selection of the Grand Theft Auto series can be traced back in large part to senior rock star designers Sam and Dan Hauser. The Hauser brothers are noted audiophiles, which in this context means 
someone who likes enough different types of music that by sheer odds one third of any soundtrack they put together will be absolutely unbearable to any normal person. Fortunately, any given GTA game contains almost as much music as your average middle schooler has managed to pirate in his entire lifetime, so there's plenty to cover the weak spots but a good soundtrack carries its own dangers. Let's say you're cruising the streets of Los Santos, obeying traffic signals, being courteous of pedestrians, drowsing softly to the Doobie Brothers, what a fool believes. When suddenly Foreigner's Dirty White Boy comes on and before you can stop yourself, you've jumped onto the sidewalk, run over a shopper, thrown a grenade at an elderly gentleman, parked your vehicle on top of him, thrown a grenade into your vehicle, stolen a motorcycle, led a four-star police chase into the desert, set a farm family on fire, and run over a cow. And don't get us started on Saturday nights all right for fighting. <laughs> you heard him, Chan. He was talking about running over cows and setting people on fire. I believe that was you, brother. Oh, yes. That's a rousing pop soundtrack for you. Tools of the Devil. <laughs> Speaking of Tools of the Devil, GTA has also had designs on your idle hands in the form of minigames and side activities. Where once the chief off-mission diversion in GTA was seeing how long a chain of flattened pedestrians one could make with a garbage truck, newer games have introduced more varied, less illegal pursuits such as triathlons, roller coasters, and depositing small currency into performing ladies' undergarments. The tasks are so varied, oftentimes the only crime committed in an entire play session is running over a man with his own car that you stole solely to drive to a full nine-hole golf course. And there's biking, and gliding, tennis, yoga. Frankly, there are far too many to list here. Which is why, to save time, I'm just going to administer a series of small shocks to Arnie and see which popular sport his muscular convulsions most resemble. His last one had kind of a tennis feel to it. Brother, where is Arnie? What? He's right, uh, oh, oh. <clears throat> and there you have it. It turns out the element that induces homicidal rage in impressionable gamers is tennis. Make a note, brother. Noted. Also, we should remember not to go cheap on the restraining straps again. Until next time, video gamers, this is Shu, Chan, and an unhinged maniac dwarf bidding you safe driving and no sudden moves.